20 seconds. Got a packed room. Ooh. All right, so we're live, okay. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Facts Against the Clock Lab. Shout out to Native Instruments for having us. Uh, can we get a round of applause for Elias Mazian, please? <laughs> Local hero from Amsterdam. Cool, so for those of you who don't know, the Against the Clock is basically a 10 minute challenge where we have producers making a beat in 10 minutes. Um, Elias, have you, do you have anything prepared? Do you know what you're gonna do at all? I ain't gonna say nothing about that, man. All right, yeah. cool. No, it's all a mystery, let's go. All right, so we'll talk about that after you do it. Okay? Exactly. All right, let's get into it. All right. So I'm going to press the timer, and when you hear the beep, you go, okay?
Good, but the something happened in the beginning. Uh, Technical difficulties. Yeah, well, it's really boring, but you know these colored things. You want to make yeah. this colored thing so you can work in that, and yeah. this suddenly couldn't work anymore. I know how and why, but I completely forgot. I mean, you got a lot done, to be honest. Like I thought you were. Yeah. Like, you got singing in there. You got the little. Yeah, and also the singing. You know, that's uh, I wanted to do like layers and a harmony, but then I saw all these people and it yeah. didn't really work. It's all your fault, guys. I Sorry. couldn't get the high notes and stuff, yeah. you know. Maybe I got too high myself. Let's <laughs> Do you want to maybe take us through, like, step by step what you did and kind of just explain yeah. to us a little bit? So, usually w the way I work is uh, I used to make hip-hop beats. And they, uh, that's, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, and that was really about layering stuff. Uh, I'm not really that guy that works MIDI clocked with all these machines and this... I don't know uh, how a lot of techno guys work. And I'm a really big fan of Larry Hurd, and he has this musicality in it. So I just like to layer melodies until it's too much. Right, right. And then delete one, and then it's usually enough. So yeah. So, so what did you start, kind of, if you wanted to take a step by step into yeah. a bit? Well, I am not so good at um, being efficient, but this is, I just. Uh, I, I used uh, some drums from an old uh, uh, drum computer called the, the Boss DR660, I think. Okay. And that was a Chicago house uh, classic drum computer. So this is my tribute to that kind of sound. Um, and then just layer stuff. And I just discovered, I didn't know that, that you can use sense in Ableton. Because I was used to record everything through guitar pedals. Yeah. So I, d I used the sense today for this. I just used this. The, the classic, this is what you get when you open Ableton. Oh yeah. But it's good enough. And then uh, the bass line came from a Uno 106 sample, because I couldn't bring the Uno 106, a bit too heavy. Um, from Lego Weld, big tip. It's nice. He, makes, Lego Weld. he makes a lot of sample kits, which are nice. And this is a Poly 800. I just got it fixed. It's one of my favorite low budget 80 synths. It has all these melancholic synth sounds. That was the lead and the chords you heard. Then a filter with a LFO to just let it flow, it rhymed. Um, and uh, then my singing, uh, which is uh, just uh, running out yeah. of time, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, the and, and some congas, you know, to make it funky. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you were talking about the Poly 800, um, and you we were kind of talking earlier, and you were saying how you were a bit stressed that it wasn't in your studio, and you were kind of doing it somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, was, that was the biggest, the most stress, you know? like. Uh, I tried a few things in the studio, but I knew I c it wasn't like it was there. Uh, and, and uh, So I had to start over again. So shout out to the girl, woman that helped me out. She was, I don't know, what's her name? I don't know. So the, 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 German, the German woman, she helped me out really well and everything is connected now. And now I, I felt really comfortable doing my thing, yeah. Um, so how important is kind of having your gear, like having hardware? Is it like a important thing for you? Or well, to be this is the first time I ever did this, so uh, after this I mean time... Like when you when you make a track normally in your studio, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I, I, I'm really someone that uh, has to have his uh, um, a surroundings that I already know. I'm not so good at going somewhere with a laptop and working. Yeah. It's really about uh, a feeling and, uh, I don't know, I, it's ha I have to know the room and know where everything is. But that's why this was a good... Um, a good thing to do for me, you know, to get out of my... Out of your comfort zone. Exactly, yeah. Um, and also, th I think the singing was, like, a pretty important element. The yeah. So can you talk about when you, you know, how you started singing and how 
you kind of mix that into your production? Well, when I was, was into hip hop, I went to like a lot of house parties too, minimal back in the days. And there was uh, everybody, w when they would play like a Terry Chandler or Levy Hurt track, they would be like, oh, you, you play a lot of vocal house. And for me, vocals are part of the whole thing. I don't believe in, uh, in uh, vocals or instrumental stuff. I think it can be instrumental to the, to the quality of a track. So for me, singing is something I always did. And I really like to do that because it gives it my my flavor or whatever you want to call it. And uh, you can also say something when you sing. And with this against the clock, it was nice to have a narrative, you know? Um, does anyone have any questions? Anyone? People are very shy today. No one's asking any questions. Yeah, I can imagine. OK, can we get a round of applause, please? <laughs> Thank you. We've got one more against the clock after this, so stick around. Cheers.